everyone, it's Nicole from KenHub and welcome to our tutorial on the cerebellar nuclei. So today we're going to be exploring the nuclei that are found within the cerebellum and the structure that we see here on the back of the brainstem. So first off, what we're going to do is a quick review of what the cerebellum is, looking at the following gross structures, the vermis, the various fissures and zones, the fourth ventricle, the superior medullary velum, the superior cerebellar peduncles, the medial longitudinal fasciculus, and lastly, the lingula. We'll then review some of the nuclei that we find deep in the cerebellum, and these include the vestigial nucleus, the interposed nuclei, and the dentate nucleus. The cerebellum is an incredibly important structure that consistently is monitoring, adjusting, and aiding in our motor control, gait, and movement coordination. The cerebellum is found at the base of the brain, inferior to the cerebrum, and just posterior to the brainstem. We can see it here highlighted in green. If we look at it from a different angle just here, we can see deep inside some various structures within it. And these structures are going to be the ones that we'll discuss in detail and we'll review their functions. So firstly, let's take a look at the cerebellum as a whole. So this image shows us the superior or tentorial surface of the cerebellum. And it's quite easy to see here that the cerebellum has two hemispheres, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. Separating these two hemispheres and running right down the center is a structure we call the vermis. The vermis begins here at the anterior cerebellar notch and curves 180 degrees to the posterior cerebellar notch located here. The vermis is further divided into the superior and inferior vermis and the superior vermis we can see from the tentorial view and it's pointed out over here. If we take a look at an inferior view of the cerebellum, we can now see the inferior vermis pointed out here and we can also see the most anterior portions of the superior vermis as well. So have a look at this image over here. Highlighted on the cerebellum is the horizontal fissure. And if we cut the cerebellum along the horizontal fissure and then lay it face up, we end up with a structure that looks like this. So we can still see the vermis in this structure highlighted in green. And this structure actually allows us to break the cerebellum into several zones that will help us localize particular cerebellar nuclei. So first we have the vermal zone highlighted here in green. And just beside this zone, both on the left and right side, we have the paravermal zones highlighted in blue. And lastly, adjacent and on the outermost edges, we have the lateral zones highlighted in red. So a very important cavity that is associated with the cerebellum is the fourth ventricle. And it's very important to note here that our brain has four ventricles that are in communication with one another. And they're filled with cerebrospinal fluid, which is a clear fluid that has several important functions in our central nervous system. The ventricles of our brain are four. So as we mentioned, we had four ventricles in our brain, the two lateral ventricles, as well as the third and the fourth ventricle. The fourth ventricle is closely associated anatomically with the cerebellum. And in this image, we can see the entirety of the ventricular system traveling from the cerebrum down to the spinal cord. And the fourth ventricle, highlighted here in green, is sandwiched between the cerebellum and the brainstem. So when we take a look at the image in cross-section, we can see the fourth ventricle has this smaller cavity anterior to the cerebellar structures. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at KenHub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.